Now, at the time of release, the anticipated part two of Ninjago Crystallized has released across the world. It is an amazing three hours of content, which I absolutely enjoyed. As far as ending the modern era of Ninjago, I can't think of a better way to do it, and that's what we are discussing today. Hello everyone, Gabe the Builder here to tell you how Ninjago Crystallized makes a perfect finale. Just so you know, I'm currently in editing a video, um, which is an episode by episode review of part two of Crystallized for my second, fourth channel, Gabe the Person. Uh, I filmed it with my sister. It's going to be a lot of fun, really silly, but just also a bit of fun. So stay on the lookout. Um, yeah, this is a very bittersweet video for me, but yeah, let's get into it. Also, spoiler alert. I'm not doing my spoiler alert thing today. Sorry. But for the basic summary of the plot, the Overlord has returned and is invading Ninjago. He has generals, which consist of the icon past villains and a vegetone army which can crystallize whoever they come in contact with corrupting them the overlord takes over the city and with the help of the old allies the ninja must find a way to defeat the overlord before it's too late now the first thing i want to discuss is how this just feels like a perfect final season we've had two other final battle type seasons in season two and season ten season two we had a half a season dedicated to the overlord plot and about two hours of content now that's also stretching it because it includes a stone army stuff, which is in Jago, which is hardly even Overlord, but it was still pretty good. Uh, but I found it lacking a little bit. Don't judge me on that. I don't think season two is a perfect ending, though. Sorry. In season 10, we had a meager 80 minutes of content stretched across four episodes, which was pretty rushed and disappointing to be acting as the conclusion to the beloved Sons of Garmadon arc. But in this season, we have a whole 30 episodes of 5 hours of content. I do believe that part 1 should be included in the battle time, final battle type thing, as it was building up to the final battle with the gathering of the council, and just building up for elements we need in this. I don't really say you can count that for season 2. This, everything is leading up to that. Furthermore, every episode in part 2 had massive stakes, and each move had a long-term impact on the plot. And besides one episode, which is episode 24, in my opinion, they all had this epic feel, which a final battle should have. It united plot points which formed up all 15 seasons of the show and weaved them all together masterfully to make this one season that have the massive scope it should. The next thing I want to discuss is the use of time and planning. In this season, there is almost no action without consequences. For example, as we start out, Lloyd goes into the Crystal King hideout, gets captured. This leads to the ninja looking for him, which leads to the monastery being undefended, which leads to the council ambushing them, getting the golden weapons to retrieve the overlord. That's like three episodes right there. That's so much. There's no filler, and there shouldn't be any. We have villains who don't make blunders just for the sake of giving the heroes opportunities like we see in many of these shows, but because of their character traits. We see the dark side doesn't care for each other, they don't have friends, they don't have compassion. Garmadon shows us this by his arc in the season, and it proves why the Overlord couldn't see the ninja's victory because he could never comprehend the power of allies and friendship. The council wasn't being controlled by respect, but by fear, something a green friend of mine doesn't do. No, not that one. To further this point, as we have seen from all over the show, are coming back to protect their home. We also have long-running plot points like the Vengestone Buyer, Oniform. And of course, when I talk about bringing back old plot points, there is no one bigger than the one that basically is the size of the whole show. Everyone knows what I'm talking about. They gave the lyrics, jump up, kick back, whip around and spin, meaning I'm grinning to cheek to cheek right now, I'm sorry, it, that, it just makes me so happy. While originally contextualized as Spinjitsu undoubtedly, now we have an in-story meaning for these iconic words. I still can't decide if it's cringy or not, but I love it either way, you can hear it in my voice. Uh, another point is the writing. To make a final battle, you need good writing. To end a show, you need good writing. To reopen an old plot point and character arc, you need great writing. And if you want to have a grim yet entertaining final season, you need great writing. Somehow, they succeeded this in every way. 
The final battle was written spectacularly. You have so many tiny battles leading up to the invasion of Ninjago City, which makes it feel earned when the Overlord captures it. You see every step from joining the generals together, the formation of the army, pushed back to the gates which the army made, and then when you have the resistance, you also see that every step of the way. You have a reason why the army was strong and why we saw their weakness. It was set up so when it happened, it felt worth it. The ending was done so well, which closed all plot points that they opened in this season, but not too closed where it would feel unnatural to continue in the future, which they will be doing. But how they brought back the Overlord and Hermie, two characters which I had serious doubts about, was brilliant. The Overlord, I didn't want to come back because he'd already come back once, and I mean, it just, just didn't seem that fun. But how they did it here, I, ex I really enjoyed it. He was at his strongest ever here in episode 29, and I, he per literally said he had the perfect vessel. This means if he ever did return again, which he needs to, he won't stand much of a threat, seen as he was defeated at his fullest strength. This is what he's wanted. Every time we've seen his, he hasn't been at full strength. This is what he eventually wanted, and now he got it. So if he came back, he's it's not going to be important. And, I mean, anyways, he was just defeated in a satisfying way here, more than any of past seasons, which is why I really like his return. Hiromi's return was done in a way which felt in character completely. First of all, she was dead in Season 9. They didn't mess with it? That was great. Next, they explained why she came back and worked for the Overlord. She was indebted to him, and it made sense. She also did something that no other character could do besides maybe Garmadon, but after season 10, they probably shouldn't have, and that supposed an emotional connection to Lloyd. You can see on both sides that each person cares for the other in their actions, but they also feel betrayed and need to fight for their ideals. She believes that peace is necessary, but one side needs to win, and evil after all she's gone through with the loss of her parents and all that is the side that's going to win, so she sides with them to bring the peace. But that main motivator is what leads to her switch to good when she sees that the embodiment of evil happily claim responsibility for the actions which caused her parents' death. The actions she previously blamed on the embodiment of good, Lloyd. It makes sense, it is beautiful, and it makes Lerumi more likely, and I love it. Uh, they, they're they setting up Lerumi in the season, I know it. it. It needs to happen. I'm not a shipper person, trust me, but mm, I need it. And the way they balanced the tone of this season was absolutely amazing with every single jokes. We have one-liners, long-running jokes, jokes that are being brought back, and even some referencing. For some examples, we have great one-liners like, Woo, there! Or anything Hermie and Garmadon says, they're amazing. Long-running references throughout this season like Christopher, who's an absolute legend, and I'm shocked wasn't included in the set with Garmadon. Uh, they brought back the Zane breaks in, gets messed up, he speaks funny, something like that, reference that they've been doing throughout the show. And I will say, I didn't like this one just due to its location in the story, being six episodes away from the end, last episode. Uh, I mean, it was fine, but maybe just could have been earlier in the season. But anyways, for referencing, we have references to po a popular movie in the poster, I, I wonder which one... You, can you see it? Or a female character in story saying, You took everything t from me from a character associated with the color purple. Again, I wonder who that could be. It was absolutely hilarious and caused more laughs than possibly the whole show combined this whole season. Njago Crystallized is an absolute masterpiece from beginning to end. Part 1 was fantastic opening with great episodes throughout, like that opening, that first episode, mwah, mwah, mwah. And part two shows that a Lego show, supposedly made to sell toys, can be a masterpiece, better than most quote-unquote kids shows today can be. And it's it's just absolutely amazing. I love it, I love it, I love it. I am most thrilled to be a Ninjago fan for the past seven years and couldn't be happier with what we got. If we never got any more Ninjago, although sad, I would be satisfied. It was really a work of art and something I recommend to any Ninjago fan no matter how long you've been watching. You've stopped after season 10, season 2. Come back, it's great. You just started watching. Watch this season. I mean, just no matter who you are, if you have any connection to the show, it will move you like it moved me. Maybe not as much as me because I watched it all, but 
I've just had such a big connection with it throughout my life. But you're you're still gonna love it. Well, anyways, that's all I have to say. Thanks for watching, and what do you think? Also, stay tuned for my episode-by-episode episode review and another video I'm working on right now, talking about the future of Ninjago and what I want the next season slash show to be. Once again, thanks for watching, and until the next one, bye!